The Mauser Model 1871, or Gewehr 71, was the first in a long line of German service rifles that were designed by the Mauser brothers. Adopted in 1871 following the Franco-Prussian War, it was Germany's first metallic cartridge rifle. It fires a cartridge as 11.15 by 60R, commonly known as 11mm or 43 Mauser. For shooters in the modern day, dies are available, and so are bullet molds. But brass is another story. In most cases, it's either out of stock or selling for exorbitant prices. The solution is to make your own, but there isn't a perfect parent cartridge. Here is a dummy round made from an original piece of brass. There's three critical dimensions to it. The rim diameter, the base diameter, and the rim thickness, which sets the headspace. It's tough to measure with the recessed portion of the rim, what's known as the A base. Let me get it out of the way that I'm making brass for my Mauser 71. The magazine-fed Mauser 7184 fires the same round, but it has a unique concave bolt face that closely fits the base of the cartridge. With the flat face of the Mauser 71 bolt, I don't have to worry about the A-base. Two options for brass that are somewhat close are belted magnums, commonly 300 Win Mag or 7mm Remington Mag, which are rimless and bottlenecked, or 4570, which is a bit short. Longer variants such as 45 Basic would be better, but they're equally hard to find. First up, the Magnum Brass. This is made from 300 Win Mag. I turned an aluminum ring on the lathe, that slips over the case and is glued into place. To do so, I turned off the belt, as you can see on this nickel-plated case. The ring is the exact diameter and thickness of the rim on the dummy round. For the rest of the case, I annealed it and ran it into an 11mm Mauser sizing die, very slowly with lots of lube as the neck has to expand significantly. The second example here has the ring turned from steel. It ends up being pretty thin, so steel may be more durable than aluminum. This third example of converted brass is made from 7mm Remington Magnum. For the rim, I added a snap ring in the extractor groove. The snap ring, plus the rim on the case, is within 5 thousandths of the required headspace, well within range. I did have to grind down the ears, so there's no getting these off of the cases, but the new rim's diameter is now in spec. Next up is the 4570 brass. They are short, but there is enough of a neck to hold the bullet. I did have to turn down the rim slightly to be equal to that of the dummy round. However, the rim thickness is about 25 thousandths too thin. To make up space, I have these, rubber o-rings. I'll slip one over the bullet and down the case to just in front of the rim. The idea is that when chambered, the o-ring will push the case back against the bolt face, taking up the head space. With a few different types of rounds loaded, time to test these at the range. As you could see, the first test was a failure, with only one round actually firing. There were two causes, I think. First is that I only brought the thinner O-rings for the 4570 brass. 
When hit by the firing pin, the case must have moved forward and the primer wasn't struck. The thicker O-rings should solve that. The second and more pressing issue is that even the Magnum rounds didn't have their primers ignited. A common complaint with the Mauser 71 today, even going back to the adoption, was light strikes. The Mauser brothers solved that issue with later rifles by adding mass to the cocking pieces, but the light strike complaint seems to plague these rifles. I ordered an extra power firing pin spring, but discovered it to be even lighter than the one that is installed currently. However, when taking apart the bolt, I noticed that the end of the firing pin was relatively square with a flat tip. I filed it to a dome shape, which seems to improve ignition. As you'll shortly see, next range trip I only had one light strike. So much for shaving down the pin. This is one that didn't go off last time. Yep. So which brass is better? Here's the fired 4570 brass. You can see how they fire form to fit the chamber, especially when compared to what I started with. The base swelled quite a bit. But now that these have been fired, they should be good to go for future reloadings. To resize the magnum brass, I'll remove the expander. The brass itself looks very similar to before, but due to its thicker walls, 
It takes a lot more pressure to resize. The rounds with the snap rings, I'll make sure that they're rotated in the shell holder with the open ends aligned. Next up are the cases with the aluminum rings. And you can see why I'm worried about the long-term durability of this method of conversion. This is actually the second time I've broken an aluminum ring. I've never actually been able to resize one without them breaking or deforming. The steel rings have survived two resizing so far, and the clips one, but long term, I'm not very confident and these might end up breaking the same as the aluminum rings. So answering my question of which is better, the 4570 brass is the better route both for durability and ease of conversion. The only modification the case needs is for the rim diameter to be reduced slightly. It's easy in the lathe, but also perfectly doable by hand with a drill and a file. Then with a 4570 shell holder and an 11 millimeter Mauser sizing die, it only takes light pressure to form the neck. When compared to the fire formed case, I gave it a bit longer of a neck to hold the bullet more securely. You can also see how the fired case has swelled at the neck, making the transition more noticeable. From there, the loading process is similar to any other black powder cartridge. The only difference between these and any other cartridge is that the cases are short, so I leave one loop groove on the bullet exposed. This is what I made for the next range session. There's three magnum cases left over, five once fired from 4570, and five freshly made from 4570. We'll see how these do at the range. Thanks for watching.